Turn to Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. I've already scratched out the title. I'm going to give you a new title for the message. Um, title for the message is A Full End. A Full End. I'll give you the other title later on. <laughs> Numbers 23, 19. This is a good passage. I love this passage of Scripture. It actually was spoken by a man that God deemed a great false prophet. Um, not because he didn't speak the truth, but because he led, he, led the, uh, he led the Moabites. He gave them a way to get God to curse Israel. And that was uh, Balaam. But Balaam said this in Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That's really the question that here this morning is, if God says he's going to do something, is he going to do it or not? Well, if he says he is, he's going to, isn't he? All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, may you bless the message now. Lord, this is not a typical New Year's resolution message, or, uh, or po it's not a positive message, but it's one of warning. It's one that is absolutely founded in Scripture. And I pray, Father, you just bless it now. Thank you for those here, Lord. You have all of our prayer requests and people that are sick and people that need prayer, people that need to be saved. And, Lord, you know who they are. We pray that you bless that. And, Lord, uh, watch over our folks. Uh, help them with the sickness that's going through the church. And just pray, Father, put a quick end to that. And just thank you for those here today. Thank you for our visitors and pray that they get a blessing. And just say, pray that you bless the message now for Jesus' sake. Amen. So God says, you know, he, sa he says, if I say something, if, uh, if I've spoken, I'm going to make it good. I'm going I'm to do it. And I'm going to talk about um, something that God says that he was going to do and is doing and is going to continue to do in the future. Uh, turn to Ezekiel chapter 6. We're going to be looking at quite a few verses uh, in the Old Testament and especially in the book of Ezekiel. Now, these passages are a little long but I just want to make sure you see the context of what I'm reading. Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 5 to 10. And what this boils down to is God is going to destroy America. God is going to destroy America. And I want to show you the purpose of why he's going to destroy it. And the reason, I, a couple weeks ago I did a message on uh, worldview, God's worldview. And we saw in that worldview that God considers the nations less than nothing. They're the dust on the scale. They're the drop in the bucket. They really don't mean anything to Him. I didn't say that you didn't mean something to Him. You do. But when it comes to the nations, He has no regard for them one way or the other. He'll bless them if they do right, but He'll curse them. But compared to Israel, they're really nothing to Him. And this kind of goes right into this of something we're going to look at. But one of the reasons why God is going to destroy America is because God's purpose has something to do with it. God's purpose. And we see, we start to see this in, in Ezekiel 6. He says there, verse 5, And I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. And all your, I mean, this is the Lord now. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yet will I leave a remnant, that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations. Then ye shall be scattered through the countries." And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they shall be carried captives, because I, I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols. And they shall loathe themselves. You know, there's probably not a race of people on this earth more self-loathing than Jews. If you've ever noticed that, they're very self-loathing. Now, I'm pro-Jewish. Don't, don't get me wrong now. I'm, I'm pro-Jew all the way. And they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. Now look at this last verse, verse 10. And they shall know that I am the Lord and that I have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. He goes, I just didn't tell you this because I'm just blowing hot air. I'm telling you this because this is what I'm going to do. Did he do it? You better believe he did it. 
for two millennia, that Jew has been under persecution. They have been cast out of places. They've been uh, uh, killed and they've been banished. And I mean, everything that could possibly happen to that Jew has happened to him in 2,000 years. The wrath of God has just been, the chastening hand of God has just been behind him the whole way. God did exactly what he said. He told him those cursings back there in Deuteronomy, the cursings and the blessings. He said, blessings if you obey me, and you'll get these curses if you don't obey me. And man, they are something to read. And they got all of them. Right? Why? Because when God says something, he does it. He does it. You can count on it. The Bible's, the Bible's 100% when it comes to the prophecies already fulfilled. Now, I realize there are about 500 that aren't, but uh, guess what? Every last one of them to the letter will be fulfilled. You can bank on it. So, he purposed to scatter them, and he did. Listen, after 70 AD, man, these Jews are going all... I mean, you got the... I think the Turks are in there, or the, uh, the Ottoman Empire's uh, in control of that. You know, your Arabs are in control of that. Then you had Europeans, you know, and some of the Pope's people were over there with the Crusades and controlling Jerusalem. That Jew hadn't been there for almost two millennia. A few of them over there, but I mean, they're just scattered all over the world. God said, I'm going to do it, and He did it. And now God's purpose to gather them. Look at Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32, and start at verse 36. Jeremiah 32, 36, And now therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, where if ye say it shall be uh, delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence, behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in, my, and in great wrath, and I will bring them again into this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Now, he has not caused them to dwell safely yet. So the fulfillment of this, you can't say, was under Ezra and Nehemiah, because they did, they did not dwell safely. They had enemies all around them. So this is a future promise of regathering. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of, their, and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That's not happened yet. They've not made a covenant with him yet. Not an everlasting one. That I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts and they shall not depart from me. Well, that hasn't happened either, has it? So that's a future fulfillment because it wasn't fulfilled at their first gathering. And of course we know that there's two. And I'll get to that passage in a minute. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 11. We're going to be in Ezekiel for three passages of Scripture. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16 and 17. Ezekiel 11, verse 16. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So that's like the second time he said he would regather them. All right, look at Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verse 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and the dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. Well, that's the third time we've read it. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. Verse 21 to 24. And say unto them, 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and will bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations. That means they're not going to be Judah and Israel anymore. It's going to be two. They'll be a, a united nation, united, united as a nation. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, uh, and will cleanse them. So they shall, uh, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and shall uh, all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. This is a passage talking about in the millennium, David's coming back to, to, to be their king. They got one king. Now, you say, well, he's the king. Yeah, but he's the king of kings and lord of lords over the whole planet. <laughs> but David will be specifically the king over Israel. And uh, he says he's going to bring him back. Well, he hadn't done that yet. I ain't seen David walking around of you. Uh, so he's not back yet. But you know what he says? I will gather them on every side. I will gather them. I'll bring them back into the land. That's the third or fourth time we've read it. You know, we just keep going. How about, now turn to Isaiah 11, verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 11, verse 11 and 12. God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He said, I will gather my people. Isaiah 11, 11, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. See, there are two. We know he regathered them the first time, but now he's going to set his hand the second time to recover the remnant of his people which be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble, notice this, the outcast of Israel, that's, their, that's your ten northern tribes, and gather together dispersed of Judah, that's your two southern tribes, from the four corners of the earth. That's what he says. Now he's either going to do it or he's not. But he says, if he says something he's going to do, he's going to do it. I think we can see that he's been doing it, right? Now, turn to Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33 to 36. God has a particular way of regathering His people. Verse 33 says, As I live, saith the Lord, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. He said he ruled the nations with a rod of iron. But he says, verse 34, And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. We know that's where that's going to be. That's in Selah, or Petra, the place of the uh, rock city, the place of the rock, where they're going to flee in the tribulation for three and a half years. There's where he's going to plead with them face to face. He said, I'm going to regather you, and that's where you're going to end up out in that wilderness. He says, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Okay? What I want you to see here is that not only is God purposed to scatter them, and then purposed to regather them, but he's also going to do it with fury. And with an outstretched hand. We see this from two world wars. Now, I don't know what you think what, why we fought World War I. And I don't know why you think we fought World War II. But I'll tell you biblically why we did. I'm telling you why God brought about two world wars to accomplish two things. Number one, the Balfour Declaration, 1917, established a homeland for Israel. World War I brought that about. That was Lord Balfour and Lord Rothschild to put that thing together. And they wanted, the, the, uh, England wanted to show their appreciation to the Jews because of the, how they helped with, with intelligence gathering during World War I. 
So that's what that Balfour Declaration about. And it set aside a homeland for Israel. But there's only one little problem. Business was good. And they didn't want to go back. They didn't want to go back. And God, do you know that the last commandment in a Jewish Bible is in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, the last verse? That's that, Because their books are arranged differently. Same books, arranged differently. Ours is Malachi that ends with a curse. Theirs is a commandment, go back. Go up to Jerusalem. It's a command. The last thing in a Jewish Bible, in a Jewish Old Testament, is for that Jew to go back. And if he won't go back, God will force him to go back. Do you know what God did in World War II? He really tore up this world, didn't he? But especially Eastern and Western Europe, he tore it to pieces. He chased that Jew back to the land. And many of them went back. You say what? With fury. He said, did he use Adolf Hitler? You better believe he used Adolf Hitler and anybody else. He said, you'll go back. I'll make sure you go back. If I've got to bring fury down on you, you'll go back. And they went back. Look, turn to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, we're going to read from verse 8 to verse 10. Jeremiah 31, 8, Behold, I will bring them from the north country, specifically talks about the north country, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child together, a great... Um, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping. Because a lot of them are coming from war-torn areas. I mean, the, when the, the Jews that made it out of uh, Europe, uh, let's face it, man, they, 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 lost, they lost their lineage practically. They lost generations in the camps. They came back with weeping. They, uh, they shall come with weeping with supplications. Why? They have need. Uh, with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Ephraim is a reference to the ten northern tribes. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. And God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? It's interesting to me that if you go to and look at Jerusalem, or just Israel in general, and look straight north, you're going to see a couple nations up there you might recognize. You're going to recognize Russia, which is at the top. They're, they're directly north. Okay? And then right below them is Ukraine. Ukraine. Isn't that something? Now, like I said, why you think we fought World War I and why you think we fought World War II can be completely different than what God had in mind of why we fought two world wars. Because I know why we fought two world wars. To set aside a homeland for Israel and the second world war to drive them back. You said, that's it? That's it, man. Because to the nations, <laughs> they're the dust on the scale. A drop in the bucket. He accomplishes his purpose. And his purpose is to get that Jew to go back home. Why? Because we're getting ready for the, the final curtain call, man. And he's going to get that Jew back. I mean, if you, didn't, if, if you didn't believe in the Bible, you ought to believe it just for the fact of how God deals with the Jew. Ukraine is directly north of Israel, as is Russia. Ukraine has the fourth largest population of Jews in all of Europe. And that's only about a little better than 1% of the world's Jews living there. They've only got like one, a little better than 1%, yet they're about fourth in, in, in Europe. Okay, It is suggested that approximately 400,000 Jews live in or did live in Ukraine. Because what did God say? He goes... I'm going to send them back. I'm going to gather them. I'm going to gather them. I'm going to gather them. But business is good, man. Why leave? I mean, why leave Germany? Business was so good. So they started hauling them off to the camps. And then they were trying to get out of there left and right and couldn't hardly do it. 
President Zelensky is a Jew and said this in 2020, barely two years before Russia invaded them. In 2020, President Zelensky said in an interview that his government was hoping to construct a little Jerusalem in human, U-M-A-N, that would include an historical museum, a big park, and, a, and reconstructing the current synagogue there. We want to make an authentic little town. We created the name Little Jerusalem as an idea to make it very authentic in a very professional way, he said. Today, the community has been evacuated following the deadly shelling of the town by Russian forces. I think it should just stay. We, we're going to create a little Jerusalem for you. There's no need to go back. Business is good. Things look good. You have your own little town. God says, I'll bomb you into oblivion if you don't go back. In Kiev, there are 110,000 Jews living there, at least there was. They have six synagogues. In Dnipro, starting with a D, in Dnipro, there are 60,000 Jews with 10 synagogues. In Kharkiv, there are 40, 45,000 Jews with five synagogues. In Odessa, there are 40, 000, uh, 45,000 Jews with four synagogues. I started checking. Odessa bombed February 24, 2022. Kharkiv has been continually bombed. It's fact, practically on the front line. Um, Kiev, Kiev, we know, has been... I always think Kiev, but they call it Kiev. That one's been uh, continually bombed, and Dnipro has been getting it too. See, what's he doing? I don't know what you think he's doing. I don't, know, I don't even know what Putin thinks he's doing. I know what God's doing. He's driving home some Jews. He's gathering some Jews, man. You know why I think God's going to destroy America? Because He said He would. He did. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 30. Look at verse 10 and 11. You know, we're getting closer and closer to this thing. I, I know, I know, I know, you've heard it before. You've, but we are getting closer and closer to this thing. It's not moving farther away, we're just getting closer to it. And sooner or later, it's going to come right on down the line. Because God doesn't, God doesn't miss. In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 10 and 11, He says, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return. How many times have we got to read that? Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. Well, where do you scatter them? Yet will I not make a full end of thee. They said, I'm going to make a full end of the nations where I scattered you. But I'll not make a full end of thee. Is that what it says? Am I reading that correct? He says, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. I mean, they, they, you got to admit, man, 2,000 years, they, they've been getting it. France has 3% of the world's Jews. And, of course, they've been persecuting them lately and recently. So many in France are starting to go back. Canada has 3% of the world's Jews. And that place is about ready. I don't know what's going to happen to Canada. They might launch an invasion against us. I don't know. I, who knows? But um, that, their leadership's about as good as ours, which is not good at all. But they have 3% of the world's Jews. Russia has 3% of the world's Jews. Okay? The United Kingdom has 2% of the world's Jews. Argentina, Germany, Australia, Brazil, Hungary, and if you want to include Ukraine, right around 1%. See, what's God going to do? He's going to go after every one of those nations. And whatever He's got to do. In Israel... There is about 30% of all the world's Jews are back in Israel. 30%. The United States of America has 
1% of the world's Jews living in it. And God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? There are more Jews in America than there are in all of Israel. We have 7.6 million Jews in this country that God says, you've got to go home. You've got to go home. Go home. Go home. Go up to Jerusalem. And they won't go. Business is good. God is going to tear this place apart. Just like he's doing the Ukraine. Whatever it takes. There are more Jews in New York than in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. We have 2.2 million in, in, the, in New York State. And then there are 5 million scattered throughout uh, our entire country. And they're probably in most of the major cities. That's usually where they, they wind up because they're, I mean, let's face it, man. God's blessed them when it comes to business. Okay. And here's what I know about the Jews, having studied Nazi Germany and the, the Holocaust and all that. No Jew has ever left a country while business was good. We have examples of this back in the Bible. How many of you remember Naomi? Naomi and her husband and her two children left Israel because of a famine. They go into the land of Moab. Her two boys end up, uh, end up marrying Moabites. God kills her husband. Then he kills her two boys. And only then does Naomi pack up and start to leave. And she's going to leave behind both the girls. They're Moabites. But Ruth says, your place, my place, your God is my God. I'm going with you. And thus, that's how the story goes. But she even changed her name because one, one that's embittered. Okay? You say, what? God has a way of driving them back. Whatever it takes. And I'm just telling you, man, after seeing what he did in, in, in Western Europe and what he did in Eastern Europe, he tore that place to pieces to get that Jew to go back. And that Jew is not leaving America until there's a reason. And probably because there won't be nothing left for him here. Because there won't be nothing left. That is a, just as great a truth in the scripture as Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sins and rising from the dead. That's just as solid a truth and as solid a promise of you having the promise of eternal life. You know that New York City has over 1,000 synagogues. Just New York City. 1,000. You say, what do you do with that? I'm not going to do nothing with it. You believe it? I believe it. I figure, well, Lord, if that's what you're going to do. I mean, I just, I just anticipate things like this happening. I anticipate this country going upside down. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how bad it's going to get, but I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be earth-shattering. It's going to be enough to drive back six million Jews back to their homeland. How bad do you think it'll be? Do you think God's going to hold off because of you? you think God's going to hold off because of me? Do you think God will hold off because of Philadelphia Baptist Church or all the local Baptist churches in the area? Are all the churches combined in, in this world? Do you think God's going to hold back? You're mistaken. God's getting ready to wind this thing up to the final. We, we know what it's going to. Those seven years of tribulation, that final thing. And God is winding up and getting ready. But he, all the Jews are here. Half, more than half of them. And he's going to have to move them back. Better hold on tight. 2023 could be a very interesting year. You, you do see that we're, we're headed for destruction anyway. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you are paying attention. Um, I saw a, an interview on the YouTube. It was a, a girl. Her name is Whitney Webb. I don't know who she is. But she's very studious and pays attention to things, and she wrote two volumes on Jeffrey Epstein. Not just 
two volumes. And uh, she's being interviewed about this book, and I guess it's very, I mean, the, the information in it is dense. It's not like it's poofy, you know, through, you know, you get one little fact here, and 100 pages later, you get another fact. It's dense about Jeffrey Epstein. And I guess his little Lolita Express uh, pedophile island, that was just a side gig. See, you're looking over here, man, you done missed the big picture. This guy's involved in intelligence. They're probably using, they're probably using Pedophile Island to get, uh, get the goods on uh, politicians and people that have power, princes and uh, presidents and businessmen. I mean, to be able to blackmail them and things, you know, because he was involved in all that, but he's involved with these intelligence communities. That's why he's dead. And that's why Gizel Lane, whatever her... Uh, Maxwell, that's the reason why she took the fall. She doesn't want to die. Because he's involved in this all over the world. This corruption it, it goes to the highest parts of our government, probably down to the lowest parts. I mean, it's just involved, it's just the corruption is, we are, we are run by organized crime. And our government's heading it up. And the Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. You know, I always took that verse with a grain of salt. Now I take it very seriously. The whole world. That's why we can't reverse or get anything done. That's why we can't seem to get somebody in there that will do the right thing. And if, if they do get in, they get voted out, or they can't make it in. They gerrymander everything to where they can't even get in. Why? It's already, it's already been decided. What's going to happen? It's corruption. So this nation's already asking for it. Okay? Their treatment of Jesus Christ, their treatment of the Bible, their treatment of God, they're asking for it anyway. I think we're going to get it. And I think we may get it soon. So you can go on record. In, in, in January 1st of 2023, Doomsday Prophet Mike Thomas said, we're going to get it. Because why? Because that book says we're going to get it. And that book ain't never been wrong. It never misses. And sooner or later it's going to happen. I, I'm not praying that it happens. I'm going to go to God and say, God, I pray. That, I mean, I'm like, I'm going to be here. I don't want to, if I'm gone, I'm going to pray. But if I'm going to be here. I don't want this thing to fall while I'm here. He said, well, maybe we'll get raptured out. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll be after all this happens. Uh... Here's the other thing. You say, what does it change? Nothing. I still got my marching orders. Still doing what I do. Preach, teach the book, go preach to the lost, win people to Christ, try to live a godly life, try to be a good example in front of people, a good witness. Nothing changed. It's not going to change. It won't even change even if it happens. I hope it doesn't. Except we're going to be closer. We're going to get we're going to get much closer because we're going to need each other. And that is the one thing about a good local church that's close-knit, people love each other, people that know what's at stake and know what's going on because if you don't know what's going on, you're just thinking, well, God's forsaken us. God ain't forsaken anybody. God's doing what he said he would do. He told you all through the book. How many times did I read it? Five, six times? God is going to do what he says he's going to do. And I actually, I'm... I think it gets more exciting as it goes along. Not that I'm going to enjoy the wrath of God falling on this country, but it gets more exciting knowing that I'm getting closer to getting out of here. You know, if, if God kicks the slats out from under your life this year, if it's this year or next year, whatever year, it's coming. But when God does that, He didn't forsake you. He's already told you He's going to do it. I mean, the people of Ukraine, I mean, I don't know why they think they got invaded, but I know why they got invaded. They got a bunch of Jews living there. They won't leave. They're leaving now. In fact, Israel's expecting a great influx from Ukraine. Business is no longer good. It's rubble. It's done. And God will wipe it out if he has to. And he'll wipe out America if he has to. God doesn't walk by and salute the red, white, and blue. The nations mean nothing to him. That includes ours.
That's why when you get saved, your worldview changes. Now, I'm still an American. I still love my country, and I, I believe in fighting for our country and respecting those that have. But God doesn't have any such respect of nations. He has respect of persons. He's not going to hold back. I want you to know that. But I also want you to know that nothing will change. Oh, our lives will change, but as far as our view and what we believe and what we're going to endeavor to do, it stays the same. We already know what we're supposed to do till He comes. And looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, no matter what that happens. So I want you to be aware. And I know I keep saying this, and I've, I've, pro I've probably been one thing in this ministry. I just keep getting this stuff from God and showing it to me. And I think He wants you to know. I'm not trying to just scare you, I'm not, although you ought to have a fear of God, but that it's coming. And we, we just think nothing will ever change. Oh no, everything will be the same. 20 years from now, we'll still have our homes and have our jobs and have our country. You know, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I'm surprised we still got it, to be honest with you. And you know what? If God, if God wants to turn this nation over to somebody else, you know there's no way to stop it, right? You know, you're, uh, all of our, uh, our military, what, you know, there's Babylon, one of the greatest strongest nations on the earth got defeated by the Persians, the Medes and the Persians. You know how they did it? They came in through, they came in through their, uh, their uh, waste tunnels, their, their sewer system, flooded into the city and took it one day. Somebody can get us. If God wants them to, they will. All right. Happy New Year, everybody. I tell you what, if you're not saved, man, get saved. Get saved. Know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. Uh, that, that, that at, least, at least, no matter what happens, you're good. You're good to go. So if you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you are saved, you need to believe what that book says, and then when this thing happens, and when it comes down the, comes down the line... You're not going, what happened? You'll know what happened. All right, let's all stand. Let's have a word of prayer. Father.